All right, we are still on 2.1.3, but we are going to be going over some examples in problems 27, parts A, B, and C, and that is on this page here. So just to remind you of what we're looking at today, we want to think about slope and how can you tell if a slope is positive or negative, what makes a line steeper or less steep, and what does a line with a slope of zero look like. So we'll get this out of the way and go ahead and start working on these problems. So I'm going to walk you through now how to graph a line by looking at its equation. All right, so I want us thinking about starting value and growth. And we're going to change that to a couple of things for our when we're graphing these on a line. So this negative one in the past, we would have said that was our starting value. We're going to think about that as our y intercept. Now before our starting value was the y value when x was zero. If you think about it, that's really the same thing. If x is zero, then we are on this y axis. So this y value is going to tell you what point we're going to have on this y-axis, in other words, our y-intercept. And I'm seeing a negative one, so I'm gonna go ahead and put a dot or a point at negative one on my y-axis. This other value here, we were thinking about that as our growth, but we're gonna change that and start thinking of that as the slope. And don't forget what slope is. Repetition helps us remember. Slope is changing something over changing something. You've probably written it down several times now. It is changing y over changing x. Now I want you to notice something about this slope here. Is this number a positive number or a negative number? 3 over 5 is a positive number. So when we draw our slope, our slope triangle should be going uphill. Remember, positive slopes, as we walk from left to right, are going to send us uphill. So let's make a sketch of our slope triangle off to the side here, and then we will transfer that onto our graph. So what is my change in y? Change in y is the number on the top. That would be 3. Change in x is so my change in y over change in x is going to get me a 3 over 5, and that's going to be my slope. Now it is time to transfer that onto our graph. So I'm going to put my pen down right on that y-intercept, and I'm going to draw my slope triangle going up by 3 and over by 5. So... Now, when, when I draw this, a lot of times I'm going to actually be drawing it like this. Remember how we said the slope triangle could be above the line? I'm actually going to go up 3 and over 5. The reason I do it this way is because it's easier for me to look at this and see the 3 come first and then the 5. So up by 3 and over by 5. This is the same thing, but I'd have to look over here and then go over. So let's do it like this. So let's go up by 3. So counting spaces, 1, 2, 3, and over by 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And that's going to get me a new point on my line. Now, this light blue that I drew here, that's not part of my line. That's just some counting to help me find my line. If I wanted to, to draw another point, I would need to go up 3 and over 5 again. Do I have enough space to do that? If I counted up 1, 2, 3, over 1, 2, 3, we're going to have to fake it a little bit. 4, 5 would get me to there. And we'd have another point right there. We could keep going forever and ever and ever, but we've run out of space. What we can do now, though, is we can back it up and go the opposite direction. So I'm going back to my original starting value, my y-intercept. And this time I'm just going to go in the opposite direction. I'll count down 1, 2, 3, and over 5 the other way. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Gets me to right here. And then I think I'm going to run off the page if I keep going. So that's enough points for me to line up a ruler and get a really nice line going. We'll go ahead and connect those dots up. 
And what do I need to put at the end of that line to indicate that this thing is going to keep going forever and ever and ever? Up 3 and over 5 or down 3 and over 5? Let's put some arrowheads to show that it's going to continue that pattern. All right. Now in part B, this one's a little interesting. Let's start with the y-intercept again. I'm seeing negative 7, so go ahead and find me negative 7 on your y-axis. Draw that first point. And then I want you to find the slope for me. What I notice is that we're missing a number in front of this x. We know there's a number there, though. It's just invisible. What is that number that we can always put in front of an x? Remember, we can always put a 1 in front of any variable. We usually don't write it, but let's go ahead and write it so we can see our slope. Now, with slope, I like slope to be a fraction. 1 is not a fraction, but we can turn any number into a fraction by putting it over 1. So if you were to ask me what is the slope of this line, I would tell you the slope is 1 over 1. The slope is 1 over 1. Let's draw what that slope triangle would look like. It's positive, so it's going to be going uphill from left to right. And my slope triangle, remember this is change in y over change in x. So change in y is 1, change in x is 1. So we've got our slope, we've got our starting value. Let's start at our starting value and let's do our slope triangle. Up 1 over 1, draw a point. Up 1 over 1, draw a point. Up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1. And just keep going up 1 over 1 until we run off the edge of the graph. We can go back to our starting value and reverse it. Go down 1 over 1. We could keep going down 1 over 1, but we're going off the edge of the graph again. That's enough to draw our line, though. We got this, and there we go. Don't forget your arrowheads. Now, I want you to check one thing before we move on on both of these problems. I want you to check the slope. And if the slope is positive, I want you to remember that you should be walking uphill from left to right. This slope is positive. When I look at this graph and I imagine somebody walking from left to right, are they going uphill? They are. So this slope, this line matches this slope in terms of positives and negatives. What about this one? This slope is a positive 1 over 1. If I imagine a person on this graph walking from left to right, are they going uphill? The answer is yes. Okay, that's a good thing to always check because that will probably be your most common mistake when you first start graphing. All right, looking at a few more examples here. 27B, find the slope of each line. All right, this should be pretty straightforward. We're going to need a slope. Let's just remind ourselves that slope is change in y over change in x. And let's also remind ourselves that positive slopes go uphill from left to right and negative slopes go downhill from left to right. We'll use those two facts to come up with slopes for these, and these are going to be pretty quick for us. So let's look at this first one. I notice that from left to right, I'm going uphill. So this is going to be a positive slope. I'll get my fraction ready here. We need a change in y and a change in x. So let's draw our slope triangle. My change in y, we're going up one, two spaces. So we'll have two on the top of my slope here. My change in x, we're going over one, two, three, four, five, six spaces. My change in x is six. So my slope is 2 over 6, and then we'll reduce that fraction, divide them both by 2. That's going to get us 1 over 3. So that's our slope for this line. Let's find our slope for the second one. What's the first thing you notice about this line? Is it a positive slope or a negative slope? I notice that this is going downhill from left to right. This is going to be a negative slope. So I'm going to go ahead and put that minus there right now so I don't forget it later on. We still need a change in y and a change in x. So let's draw a slope triangle here. All right, so my change in y, one, two, three, four, five, six spaces. My change in x, one, two, three spaces. 
So my final slope, 6 divided by 3, is that could reduce to 2 over 1 or just 2. So there's my slope for that line. So negative 2. Our last one here, this is a flat line. Do you remember what's special about the slope of a flat line? Slope of a flat line is 0. All right. And that's kind of interesting because is a flat line have a positive or negative slope? Well, is zero positive or negative? The answer is neither. Zero is the only number that's not positive or negative. It's its own thing. All right, last couple. Here we are going to try and write equations. Now this is going to be a lot like what we did up here. But in reverse, so just to remind you what we did here, we started by looking at this number here. That told us our y-intercept on our equation. So when we go down and start looking at 27 part c, we're going to be looking at where these lines cross the y-axis. That's going to be part of our um, equation. That's like our start value. That's our y-intercept. And then our slope was the number attached to the x, and that was our... Uh, we found that from our slope triangle. So we're going to draw some slope triangles, and we'll use that to find our slope. So we need two things. We need a starting value, and we need a slope. So let's go ahead and start writing our equation. We know it's going to be y equals something x, and then something is going to come after that. Let's start with our starting value. Our starting value, our y-intercept here, is at positive 2. So I'm going to put a plus 2 at the end because that's where the starting value goes. And then all I need here is to figure out what my slope is. So let's go ahead and do that. Remembering slope is change in y over change in x. Repetition. Um, and when I look at this line, what do you notice about it? Does it have a positive slope or a negative slope? Going from left to right, if I were walking this line, I would be going downhill. This is going to have a negative slope. I'm going to go ahead and put that minus out there right now. And let's find our slope triangle. So slope triangle would look like this. My change in y is 2. My change in x is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So my slope is going to be negative 2 over 6, but let's reduce that. Those both divide by 2. That's negative 1 over 3. So my final equation, y equals negative 1 over 3x plus 2. All right, last one here, folks. We got this. Let's finish strong. We know our equation is going to take this form, y equals something x plus or minus something. Let's start with our y-intercept, our starting value, and this appears to be at negative 4, so we'll stick a negative 4 at the end here. And then we just need to find our slope. Keeping in mind, slope is change in y over change in x. Let's go ahead and find our slope triangle. Now, what do you notice about this line? Positive slope or negative slope? If I had a person walking from left to right on this, they're going uphill. It looks pretty steep, actually. I wouldn't want to be climbing that one. Let's draw our slope triangle. Change in y is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 spaces. Change in x is 1, 2 spaces, 5 over 2. Does that reduce? I can't think of anything that divides into 5 and 2 except for 1. So let's just leave it as a fraction. y equals 5 over 2x minus 4. All right, thank you, folks. If you had any questions on that, just jot your questions down in the margins. Show your teacher at a later time.